that. And I'm not sure what that is, so we'll wait on that. Okay. <clears throat> Let me let you get started with. <clears throat> We're not doing all of these, so don't just start going. But um, let's start with this right here. Okay. I want you to list the factors of 36. <clears throat> I almost wish every time they said factors in a question like this, they would ask you list the factor pairs of 36. And that's a big clue right there as to what factors are. Okay? Factor pairs. It's numbers that work together. See what we've got so far. This is the number 36. What are our factor pairs? We know one in 36. Sometimes we forget that one because it's so simple. But other than one in 36, what else makes 36 through multiplication? What are some other factor pairs? Six times six. Six times six. And that's the same number. A lot of times when we list the factors like this, we don't have to put the 6 and the 6. If you did, if you wrote it two times, it's okay. But I'm going to put it right in the middle. Okay, what's another one? 3 times 12, for sure. 3 times 12. Those go together. 6 kind of goes with itself with a little mini arch right there. Yeah. 2 times 18. Yeah, you knew 2 was in there somewhere because 36 is even. 2 times 18. Well, I didn't plan that out very well, did I? But that's okay if they're not in the order. Um, can you tell where my arches are, my, no. are connecting? No. <laughs> Let me redo that. 1 with 36. 2 with 18. 3 with 12. Mine kind of cross over a little bit because my... Numbers go a little wonky. Okay, yeah. Nine times four. Or four times nine. Any others we can think of? Any others? Can somebody else in the room think of one that you forgot? Okay. Now, as a team, we've come up with all of them. This is tougher when you have to do it all by yourself sometimes. Okay. All right, but another reason to know your multiplication facts really well. Okay. Now, I know that we don't know our 18s, but you know what? This is what y'all know now, so that if you needed to figure this out, let's say you were taking some big test and you knew, you're trying to find all of them and you knew it was an even number, but you couldn't figure out what went with it, this is what you can do. Watch, here we go. You could take that 36. And do this right here. Because y'all know how to do that now. Right? And you would go, oh, one group of two goes into three. And I subtract and get a one and bring this down. How many twos are in 16? Eight. Oh, two times 18 makes 36. So you can always divide. If you, if you can't figure out that other factor, use division and it will help you. Okay. All right, the other one I wanted you to do for today 
is right here. And there's some things on here we're just not going to work with today because they're coming later for us. All right. But we do need to pra practice this and oh. Aren't we glad that the digit 9 is in there a no, few times? Yes. Cuz now it's easy. It, it, I think it's getting easier. I think it's getting easier. We talked about this yesterday, so uh, give it a try. <clears throat> Where are you rounding to? How could you figure that out? Because the words don't tell you. Yeah. Not one of you asked me what to round to, so I assumed you just figured it out. But that little line is telling you what to round to, so we're rounding to the hundreds place today. All right, so tell me what I need to do first when I'm rounding to the hundreds place. Yeah. They've kind of already marked it, haven't they? I'm going to mark it again with a dot, and I'm going to draw an arrow to that other nine. I'm assuming that's what you meant. Okay. So what's my next step? He's gotten us started. What's our next step? And a, and a hush fell over the room. <laughs> this is not the time for that. This is not the time. Only two people in the whole room know the next step. Mason, help us out. We have to see if it's greater than five. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. This is greater than five. It tells that nine. you got to go up. What's that nine going to do? You might not. Okay, go ahead. Make it into a 10. Make it into a 10. And I told you yesterday, if that happens, just write this 10 right above. Now, I'm not writing that 10 just above that 9. I'm, I'm kind of pushing it over to the next. Because remember when we had the place value chart, we filled it full of dots. When one section got up to, you know, it could hold 9, but when it got to 10, it would push over into the next section okay so now we know we're going to keep the three the four and the five but that six has got to go up okay to a seven that nine becomes a what a zero and we've always known from the arrow over becomes a zero so each of those numbers will become a zero okay so now we have that right there so to round 3,456,992 to the hundreds place is 3,457,000. There you go. So I hope the more you see a problem like this, and I'm glad they're using those knives, I hope the more you see it, the more comfortable you get. Okay. Alright, go ahead and clear off your board. Now, I don't know if um, you caught the number over here. I'll, I'll put this up here. We have taken a large leap, but have no fear. I know you might be sad because we've jumped over so many lessons. We are going back to them. Okay. We have hit today what we call a little bit of a detour. Because usually sometime along the path of working through fractions, we realize hey, we got to stop and talk about this, or we really can't keep going very easily. Okay? No, no. This, no, you're not sad about that? Um, so we have jumped to 24, and I'm putting 24 and 25 together today. Um, I'm pulling the most important thing out of 24 and the most important thing out of 25 and kind of putting them together. You'll see why. You'll see why in a little bit. So I definitely, when we get to things like the problem set, uh, we will shorten that. We will pick part of that out to do. Would we? This won't feel like two days long, I hope. Okay? But we have two important things to get to today. One thing from Lesson 24, one thing from Lesson 25. But if we don't go ahead and do this, pretty much right now, from everything else we've got left to do, everything else is going gonna, to gonna get tough. Okay? We're going to have to keep skipping some stuff if we don't stop and take this little detour. 
This says I can decompose and compose, so pull apart and put together. Fractions greater than one to express them in various forms. Anybody, is, is that crystal clear for anybody? Yeah, I, I get it. Sometimes the, the language that they choose, you know, um, by the time we pull it apart and figure out every word, we've kind of lost our meaning in there somewhere. And that's okay. We need to be exposed to bigger words and bigger language sometimes. This is what it boils down to, okay? We're going to see fractions at times that are like this. And look at this fraction and tell me what you know about that fraction. Well, what do we know about that? He knows it. It's in there. Okay, an improper fraction. All right, we've talked a little bit about this. Now, what do you know about an improper fraction? Like, what things do you know about an improper fraction? You know, why is it called that, or what's special about it? What's something? Yeah. An uh, improper fraction is more than one whole. It is bigger than one whole. Sometimes way bigger. Anything else? Does it look a certain way? No. How did you know immediately that's an improper fraction? Yeah, Bailey? Yes, and that's weird to us sometimes. At least it was at first. We've gotten a little more used to seeing them. Okay, so an improper fraction, the numerator is larger than the denominator. And at first, I think when we were starting those third grade fraction lessons, it was almost like, are we allowed to do that? But yeah, you are. Um, because what if... What if the pizza store only cut their pizzas in, let's say, eight pieces every time, okay? And so that's right here. And so what if we bought two pizzas, okay? How many eighths would we have if we had two whole pizzas? Yeah. We'd have 16 eighths, okay? Because that would be two holes of the, you know, they're cut in eighths, so that's how big they are. That's the size of the piece, eighths. So we would have 16 of those pieces. Okay. Anyway, there comes a time when you need to be able to take this fraction and turn it into a mixed number. Okay. Mixed number is where you have a whole number and a fraction together. And y'all have seen that before. You've seen things like one and a half, right? You've even said it before. How old are you? I'm five and a half. <laughs> that, those halves are important. Okay, you've even said that. So that means you're five whole years plus a little more. You're on your way to being six if you're five and a half. And you know it, right? Yeah. And you know it, okay? I'm not a new five. I'm five and a half. In other words, I've been at five for a while. I'm on my way to six. Okay. And if I just turn like 10 or something, and somebody asks how old are you, I'll say 10 and a half. <laughs> you know, you're you're at least a day past 10, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> My brother's birthday will be nine months away, and he'll be like, I'm six and a half. Yeah, like, so y'all have heard those fractions before. Those are called mixed numbers, and that's a little easy to remember simply because it's a mixture. It's a mixture of a whole number and a fraction. So today we're going to practice, or at least at first, taking this and turning it into a mixed number. Because it kind of has two names. Seven-thirds or whatever its name is as a mixed number. They are equal to each other. They just have two names. There's two ways to write it. So we're not always going to do this number line thing, but I think this is good for you to see. Okay. So... Let's follow these directions right here at first. And like I said, we won't always do this, but we're going to do this a few times at least. Now, this says to count by thirds. Okay? Now, I want you to be real careful because at first, you might want to go one-third, two-thirds, three-thirds. Look closely at that number line, though. That is not what we would do. If we're going to count by thirds, if we're going to put 
thirds up there. And we need to show it differently than how it looks now. What would we do? Okay. So at first I heard you say between zero and one. We'll start there. We need to make thirds. We know third is smaller than one, so here's between zero and one. Okay, so that's cut into thirds. But if we cut that whole number, the number one, zero to one, into thirds, we need to cut that whole number into thirds and that whole number into thirds. You see that? There's thirds between every whole number. So... Now our number line is cut into thirds. Don't look at that and think, oh, that's ninths. Because there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pieces. Don't say ninths. You have to look between the whole numbers. Remember how we always talk about one hole? Well, one hole is right there. How many pieces are there in the one hole? Three. So those are thirds. Okay, these are thirds. One third, two thirds, three thirds. And then you could keep going. Now, if it, the second step, all of a sudden we're going to stop and we're going to show a number bond and decompose seven thirds. Okay, now when you're, when you're taking a, an improper fraction and you are creating a mixed number, your number bond is your friend. It just is. And we did this the other day. I forget what our lesson was, our lesson number was, but we did this just the other day. So seven thirds. All right. I want to know, this is when we were working on the number line, knowing how far to go down the number line. I'm going to pull out one hole. What is one hole when I have thirds? Three thirds. Any number over itself is equal to 1. Okay, so what's left? If I take, if I have 7 and I take 3 away, I've taken 3 away, what do I have left? 7 take away 3 is 4. 4. Okay, but I'm going to tell you right now we got to stop because you're not a we can't leave an improper fraction down here. This is still big enough to take more out of. What could we do? There's another hole. There are two holes in here. Okay? So if you get stuck with an improper fraction down here, you're not done. You're not done. Can I take three-thirds out of that again? If I've got four, can I take three more out? Absolutely. I can take three more out. So I'm going to get rid of that four-thirds. Nope. Okay. So I can take three-thirds out twice. Okay. So I had seven. I took away three. How many did I have left? You told me four. If I have four and I take another three out, what have I got left? What's seven take away three? Four. What's four take away three? One. Okay. So this thing might start looking like an octopus up here sometimes. Okay, depending on how big the numbers are. All right. Sometimes you can take out more than one set of hole of a hole. So look, we've got one, two. Those are our whole numbers. One, two, now how much further did we go? One third. Boop. Okay. You have to say boop. So we now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven thirds. Now I could have... Before I did the number line, I drew thirds. I could have just counted down to seven thirds and found this spot. But now that's not just seven thirds. It is two. Look, guys, one, two. It is two and one third. 
That's its other name. Two and one third. Okay. So this number bond is helping me see that I've got one, two, and one third. Okay. All right. Let's look at one more of these. Okay. All right, I want you on your board to draw a number line. Okay. And I want you to make it look like this, but I, when you're drawing it, I want you to realize these are whole numbers. Zero, the whole number one, the whole number two, the whole number three. Okay, we have not made any fraction numbers yet. Okay, we're just going to need that. We need a number line. We're not drawing everything that's up there yet. Okay, we'll get there. We'll get there. All right, go ahead and put 0, 1, 2, and 3 on your number line. take about two seconds. Okay. All right. What does it tell us to do at first? Yeah. Count by fives. Not fives, but fifths. Fifths. Five, five. fifths. So that's telling us how to divide up our number line. So we're going to make fifths. How are we going to do that? What is my number line going to look like in just a minute when I make fifths? What do you think? Yeah. Yes. This is a whole, and this is a whole, and this is a whole. So every time I have a whole number, I've got to cut it into fifths. So let's do that. We're going to have five people. What happened? Oh. We're going to have five pieces right here. I'm going to have five pieces right here and five pieces right here. Okay. Usually when we're working, we've just seen from zero to one. But now we've just kind of like backed up our camera so we can see more of the number line. Okay. All right. Thirteen fifths. Now, I want to show you. I don't want you to write this. In just a second, we're going to follow the directions. We're going to do the number bond, but can you just watch for just a second? Let's say that I'm just using the number line, and I want to find 13 fifths. I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That would get me to stop right here, and I could go, watch, here it comes. This is how the number line is helpful. One, two, and one, two, three fifths. Two and three fifths. You see how I found that? Just with the number line. Okay? But I do want you to get used to writing the number bond because we're going to do that way more than we're going to do the number line. So let's create a number bond right here. Somewhere on your board, write 13 fifths. But you need some space under it. So if you've written it way down at the bottom, you're going to need to erase it. And Move it somewhere where you've got a little more room. Now, okay, I'm so glad that Eureka Math was smart enough to put division before fractions because you kind of need some of those division thoughts right now. How many times can I pull a group of five out of 13? Think about your fives, you know, think about counting by fives even. How many times can I pull that out? Yeah. Two times. Okay. I can pull two whole times. I can grab five out of 13. So I'm going to write five fifths and five fifths. I'm going to write that twice to help me remember I've pulled out two whole numbers there. Okay. Go ahead and do that. Write them on the side. It's okay. You can have your little bubble. Now, what's left? That's what you got to figure out. Five 
plus five more is ten. So we've taken ten of the fifths. How many fifths are left when I take ten of the fifths, Ishmael? Three fifths. So my other little, and some people like to put all of these in bubbles, and you can do that. You don't have to do that. Sometimes we have so many bubbles coming off of it that if we always try to circle some, some of those, um, it gets so squished together it's hard to read. As long as you can read it like this, um, without the bubble, that's fine. Hey, yes. Hey, can you please do your attendance? Yes, I'm so sorry. Hey, I was doing so good remembering. Okay, we're just going to pause for half a second. <laughs> yes, intermission, sort of. I write it on the board. All right, so just double checking. All word is out. Is bringing down. Okay. So. I hate it when I forget this. Oh, it's on the board, isn't it? It's freeze up right there. There we go. Ooh, it's moving slow. Really slow. Okay. Lunch. Okay. Now let's see if it comes back with my writing in the right place. Yay, it did. Okay. Sorry about that. All right, so we have pulled out five fifths, five fifths, and three fifths, right? Okay. So now, okay, please watch this because this does confuse a few people. This is one hole, that's one. This is another one hole, that gets me to two, and then I have three fifths. So my mixed number is two and three fifths. You see how we got that? This is one, this is two. That makes the two whole numbers, and then the three-fifths is the extra fraction part that makes it a mixed number. Oh, well, look at there. Doesn't that work out? One, two, and one, two, three-fifths. Boo, boo, boo. Yep. Okay. So, what if we didn't have the number line? Okay. What if we didn't have the number line? Now, I, th this is a lot right here that we're not going to worry with today. So just so that we don't get confused by it, I'm going to slide over here. Um, Welcome to the yep. Uploaded It's okay. Don't. Oh, hey. It's okay. Shh. Okay. All right. We have already done that fraction. I don't want to do that one one more time. So I'm going to grab a different one. a few times when our fraction number, our numerator or our denominator or both could be larger numbers. We're going to see that today. If we had this and no number line, where would you start? If you wanted to figure out what this improper fraction was as a mixed number, where would you start? What would you do? We don't have the number line to divide up this time. Where would you start? Okay, and actually when you're doing that, you're creating a number bond. Okay? Um, he said, how many twos can we get out of 15? Um, we're going to do it as a number bond so that it helps us see how many whole numbers we have. Okay? Yeah. Could you get six? Okay.
Um, so we can get we can get two twos seven times. So we're going to show that. All right. So let's do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the octopus reference a little while ago. Okay, let's not, let's, it said like an octopus, not an exact octopus. All right, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. I've pulled out 14 halves. That's not 15, though. How many are left over? One half is left over, so I'm going to have to show that. Okay. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven whole, seven whole numbers. <coughs> and then I've got one half left over. So I just created the mixed number seven and a half. Now I'm going to show you something real quick. This is not a half two. But some of you might be seeing this, and so I'm going to show you something. One other. After a while, when we get a lot better at this and more comfortable with this, some of us see all of this, and it's like, whew, is there a faster way to do that? There is. Okay. If you know. Now, this is might be easier. It takes a little bit longer, but it's easier. You can definitely do it this way. So I'm going to show you something. If you recognize that, hey, 14 divided by 2, you know, I can take out 14 twos and then for my whole numbers, and then I have one half left over, you can do it that way as well. Okay? And I know that this right here is equal to 7, and this right here is my fraction piece left over. Okay? You have to be a little careful doing it this way that you're, you know, Getting your numbers correct. This helps you see all of those sets of halves. Okay? But this is fine too. Okay? All right. Let's practice just one or two more of these before we um, take a turn. Okay? Now, all of this is less than 24 in just a second. We're going to take that turn and visit Lesson 25 because we're going to go the opposite direction. In a little while, we're going to start with a mixed number. We're going to figure out how we make it into an improper fraction. Okay? All right, let's try this right here. What if you had that improper fraction? Okay? Obviously, we are working with a number bond. Okay? So, how many times can I get 5 fifths out of 16 fifths? That's what you're asking yourself. You're trying to pull out every set of 5 fifths that you can. Because every time I get 5 fifths, I get a whole number. Okay, go ahead and try this one. Five fifths. So you've got to kind of do a little subtraction uh, along the way. I'm trying to pull out five fifths as many times as you can. So do it one at a time. Once you pull out five, and let me let me kind of think through this with you. Okay, so here I go. I'm gonna pull out five fifths. Okay, and so you got to think, once I pull out five, how many fifths do I have left? Yeah. No, when I pull five away from 16, how many do I have left? Let's see, 11, okay. 
I can still pull out another group of five. How many groups of five can I pull out of 16 total? Yeah, three. I can pull five-fifths out three times because three times five is 15. If I pull 15 out of 16, how many are left over? One-fifth. One Five, ten, fifteen, and one more makes sixteen. So really this is kind of like a different form of subtraction, a little bit different form of division. What does this make altogether? What is our new number? What is our new mixed number? What would it be? If this is what my number bond looks like, what is my mixed number? Come on, i got to have more than two people see this. How many whole numbers do we have? Four. How many whole numbers do we have? We have one, two, three. Those are whole numbers. Mason, what would, what would it be? Three and one-fifth. Here is a whole. Here is a whole number. Here is a whole number. And then one-fifth left over. So that's three and one fifth. Okay. I'm getting the vibe. It just may take seeing this a few times. Okay. All right, go ahead and clear your board. We're going to keep doing a few of these because I think I, I see that we need it. Okay. What if we had 17 thirds? Okay, we're going to do a number bond. So we're going to pull out as many three thirds as we can. Okay. So how many threes can I get out of 17? That's what you need to think. Three times what is the closest to 17 I can get? Yeah. Three times what is the closest I can get to 17? Three times five? If I go three times six, that's 18. Too big. Three times five. Three times five gets me 15, but I need five of these. Three times five. There's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, there's five. What is three times five? 15. What is three times five? Fifteen. So if I take fifteen away from seventeen, how many thirds are left over? Two thirds. It's kind of like your remainder. Alright, so this is a whole number. This one, this one, this one, and this one. All whole numbers. Anytime I have the same number over itself, I get a whole number. So what is that going to be? What is my mixed number going to be? More of you are starting to see. Charlotte, what's it going to be? How many whole numbers do we have? Five. Five and two-thirds. Two Five and two-thirds is my mixed number. Now, what are your questions for me? What is something about this that just doesn't quite maybe make sense to you right now? Okay. We're all we're all good to go. How many of you, and it is okay, whatever you do here, how many of you feel comfortable with this? Did you kind of see what's going on? Okay. This is brand new to us, so if you don't feel comfortable yet, that's totally normal. Okay. Yeah. You what now? I feel like Yeah. Yeah, still Yes. 
fractions. Yes, but this, y'all get, that's not, we're not comparing fractions today. We're just changing the name of a fraction. This is why I called it a detour. We're going to go back to comparing fractions. Do y'all remember the other day we came to a fraction and it was like one and one third or something. And I was like, we got to jump over that. We don't know how to do that yet. Because we hadn't done this yet. Once we do this, this is going to help us with a lot of different things we do. Okay? Because there's going to be lots of times where the directions or I will say, hey guys, you're going to have to change that to an improper fraction first. Or you're going to change that to a mixed number first. You're not going to be able to do that until you change it. Well, if you don't know how to change it, <laughs> what do I do? So that's why we're practicing this. Okay, let's go with 13 fourths. And let's try to, with a number bond, change that to a mixed number. Um, okay. How many times can I pull four fourths out of 13 fourths? You know, how many groups of four fourths can we get? Well, ask yourself, four. You know, how many times can I get four out of 13? It's real close to a fact family. It's just not quite there. Yeah. Yeah. What is 4 times 3? It's 12. So it's close. So I'm going to pull 4 fourths out 3 times. And, and, and Bailey just told us that this, all of these make 12. So if I take 12 away from 13, how many... I have left. Yeah. One fourth. Okay, I want to show y'all this real quick. Just maybe this will help somebody. If I took 13, I know this these seem like small numbers to do this with, but you can do this. Can I get a group of four out of one? No. So I look at 13. Y'all told me we can get three groups of four out. So I put the three up here. Four times three is 12. I subtracted. I've got one left over. I've got one of my fourths left over. This is like my remainder. I've got three groups of four fourths. I've got one left over. So this mixed number becomes three and one fourth. The three comes from these, and the one fourth comes from that little guy that's left over. Okay? All right. We love this. We feel so good about this. Yay. I'm imagining that. Am I imagining that? Or is it helping the more you see it? Yes. You know, I don't, I don't want to spend forever doing these, but I, 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 it's like the light bulb is coming on. I can tell the more we do these, it's like, we're, we're, yeah, yeah. Can I just do another one? Yeah, we're going to do like one or two more of these. Okay. Here we go. Yeah, the story of our lives, so here we go. Um, okay, yeah. Thirteen halves this time. I can't win. Alright, no huffing and puffing. Huffing and puffing gets us an extra one. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Just one yes. <laughs> I got quiet real quick. <laughs> like a basketball practice when somebody else. Why did I complain that we get an extra win for it? Got quiet real quick. The only thing I'm happy with for school is PE. Okay. Yeah. But one day when y'all are grown and you're working at a job somewhere. And you use these for, or you're at home, and you use these fractions somehow, because you will. We're gonna take. Oh, I hope you remember. Man, I'm glad that we learned fractions in school. <laughs> yeah. Okay, awesome. Yeah. I done. Two. Oh, you're helping us here. Okay, let me get caught up. Go ahead. Two. 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 Two
Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I've done two halves six times. Okay. So two halves. Two halves. Two halves. Two halves. Six. Nine. Double check there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And then, then you I have one half left. One half left over. Then you get. Then I got six. I got six holes and one half. Now, did anybody else get what Caleb got? I wrote that in a hurry. I agree with okay. myself. Okay. You agree with yourself. Martin. Okay. I'd hate for you to be arguing with yourself over there. Okay. All right, this is exactly it. This is exactly it. Yes. Okay. Now, there is a way to check to see if you're right, but you have to know the other thing we're learn learning that. today. I don't want to learn that. You have, but that's where we're headed. Okay. No. That's where we're headed. Now, I, I will say this. I debated in my mind, should we put this on one day or two days? Two days. Now, listen, we're going to go ahead and learn the other part. But if after that, I really feel like we need one more day with this, then we'll come back and we'll practice tomorrow. Okay? All right. I'll be fair about it. I'm not I'm not going to stretch your brain too much today. I know you guys can handle stuff, so. Maybe. You got it. Maybe. You got it. Let's do one more of these, and then I'm going to show you something else. Okay. So let me find it. Here it is. All right, here we go. 18 fourths. Use a number bond to find the next number. 18. <coughs> How many times can you get a group of four out of 18? I'm, I'm, I know you can answer that. I'm, I'm saying these things so that you'll ask yourself these questions if you're stuck. Four times what is cl is as close to 18 as I can get? All right, Charlotte, walk us through this one. Hold on. I need something pretty here. Okay. Go ahead. You know that four fourths, four times, is how many fourths? Now, how many did we take out? Four times four is what? Sixteen. Sixteen. So that's as close as we can get without getting too big. Mm -hmm. So if I take sixteen out of eighteen, how many have I got left over? Two. I think he's short. Two fourths. So this is a whole number. Two. Three, four. What is the mixed number you had written down? Wait, I forgot. Okay. What would it be though? Look at look up here and help us. What would it be? We've got this many whole numbers. Four, uh, four. four and two fourths. This is how many whole numbers we have, and this is our leftover piece that's not quite a whole number yet. Okay. All right. Are we done yet? Are we done yet? Not for the day. Okay. All right, we're going to try to change what we're doing. So if you would clear your board, if you would push it to the corner, okay, so, and we're going to, I need you to stay with me. Now, we're going to sit up. We're not laying on our desks. Okay. Use your brain to get the good oxygen. Take some Deep breath. Stand up for a second if you need to. Stretch a little bit if you need to. Okay. No. All right. Have a seat. So let me switch out right here. And we will jump right into. I'm actually. I've already, yeah. I'm going to just keep this on a whiteboard and um, 
put the problems on because I basically got a screen with a big old mix number on it. There's not a whole lot to show you. So let me erase that. And I'm going to start with this one that they give us. Three and four fifths. Okay. So here we have a mix number. And this time we need to change it to an improper fraction. You probably are going to have to do this more because sometimes some of the math that we do it's easier to do if you do it with an improper fraction. And then sometimes at the very end of the problem that the directions will say, write your answer as a mixed number. So you'll have to change it back. Okay. So if you have a mixed number, what do you do? How do you make that an improper fraction? Okay. So what I want you to do for just a second is this. Sometimes I just jump right in and I start talking. I'm going to give you a minute to look at that and to really do some thinking and possibly even talking with the people around you, just at a desk nearby. What are some ways you think we could change this into an improper fraction? So let me give you a minute to do that. Just think, think about it for a second. You might not have a clue, but, but look at it and think about it. Right now, with you're talking with folks, you're thinking of any possible way. If you come up with a way, just just keep it to yourself for a second. We're not sharing just yet. Don't want your arms to fall off. Okay. You might have an idea. The person beside you might not know have any idea. So you can share it with them and see what they think. Okay. One of the quietest discussions we've ever had. Did you make it loud? I don't know. I don't know. I don't All right, so we're back together in five, four, three, two, one. Okay. What's your thought? You multiply five times three, that's 15, and then you multiply five and 15 times three. Okay. You multiply five times three, you said? Okay. So you think that that's what we need to do? Multiply the denominator by the whole number? That's all we would do? Okay. Anybody want to add to that? Anybody want to agree with that? What are you going to add? Three times five, but then add the four more, and that'll bring your denominator, and then your denominator is five, so bigger than six. Okay. Do you have any agree with that? There's a thing behind it, just so you know. Just get curious. Okay. Anybody agree with that, or need to add something different to it? Okay. Uh, Charlotte's going to go in. Okay. <laughs> All right. How many of you just are really not sure about any of this? Okay, a few. <laughs> okay. And that's okay too right now. All right, please put the top on your marker. Lay it down. Okay. Don't let it distract you right now. Okay. It's amazing to me how sometimes you guys can figure things out if I would just let you do it. Okay. A year or two ago, we decided to call exactly what Will just said, and Ishmael said the first part of it. So you guys were really saying the same thing. You just took it a step further, which is we've got to have that extra step, okay? Um, you know, you get to this, you're looking at it, you're trying to figure out how to switch it, and you're like, ah, ma, help me. Ma, you know, because sometimes we call mom. Ma, yeah. ma. How many of you mama. ever asked for help at home? Ma, where's my sock? Or ma, yeah. you know, maybe that's what you call your grand grandparent, or maybe that, you know. Now, why why are we saying that? Because we need the letters M A. Okay. So if you forget what to do, ma, ma can help you. Okay. Ma. We're gonna multiply first. And then we're going to add. We're going to multiply the denominator times the whole number. Okay. 
because we've got this many whole numbers. Every time I have a whole number, I have five more pieces, right? Yeah, so I need to multiply those together to know how many pieces I have in my whole number. Five times three. Then I need to add this number to that total because these are my extras. These are my extras. And so I've got to add that to my total. So five times three is 15. We add the four to it and we've got 19. So what y'all are saying, if, if this is all true, because I'm really describing what you guys said, 19 fifths would be the improper fraction. If I'm not sure, I could reverse it. How many times can I get 5 fifths out of that? Well, 5 times what is closest to 19? But 5 times what is that? 3. So I can take 5 fifths out of here 3 times. Right? I go, what is that? <laughs> I don't know. Felt the need to be fancy. Okay. And so if I have 15 fifths, I take those away from 19 fifths, what's left over? 4. So 1, 2, 3, and 4 fifths. Okay. Yeah. All right. So some of you see without thinking I gotta multiply, then I gotta add you you already see how to figure this out, okay? But that's what we do. So this really goes hand in hand with what we just did. That's why I, I thought, well, I'm gonna try to put these on the same day. They go they go together. Okay. So let's practice this a few times. <clears throat> it's really just we're multiplying, we're adding. That's all we're doing. Okay. So let me get a few. Let's just use these. Okay. So on your board, we're going to put the fraction four and two thirds. Okay. We're doing this one together here. Okay. So first, we're going to multiply because the first thing we want to know is how many of these thirds are in that whole number four. Every time I have one whole number, I have three thirds. So I'm gonna multiply these two. So four times three is what? 12. 12. Plus two more. 14 thirds. You're not, that's what's nice about fractions. Your denominator's not gonna change. I don't have to worry about the denominator number. It's gonna always be thirds, okay? Let's make sure we're doing that. All right, what are your questions? Some of you see how we got this. Some of you might not see how we got this. Do you have a question about it? Sometimes it's hard to think of what to ask. I get that. I know. And it's not until later on when you're maybe working on your own or you're going to get stuck. And, you, you know, that's an okay time to ask a question too, though. Yeah. I think it's easy once you start practicing it a mm -hmm. lot and you get it. I agree. Yep. I think I'm gonna have to do this a lot. Okay. We're gonna do a few of these. Except I'm already to the end of those practice problems. Let me pull some practice problems from here. I can I could just make them up, but let's just pull them from here. Alright, so let's change five and two thirds into an improper fraction. Remember ma. Where you're going to multiply first, then you're going to add. Okay. Some people forget what to multiply and what to add. Okay. Maybe it will help you to know, multiply that denominator because we're trying to figure out how many thirds there are. Yeah. You got a final answer? Okay. All right. What did you get when you multiplied? Fifteen. Fifteen. All right, plus the two more, what's the final answer? Okay, 17 thirds. I want you to see that. 
see how we're getting that number 17. We're multiplying the denominator by the whole number, and then we're just adding these two extras. Um, remember when we're checking, I think it is our division problems, and we do some multiplying. Y'all listen. We do some multiplying, and then we add the remainder. That's what this is like. I'm multiplying, and then I'm adding my remainder, my little extras. Okay? That might help you remember as well. All right, let's do another one. Four and one-fifth. What does that change to? This is usually not too bad on the multiplication of the, the adding. Could be, I guess. Four and one-fifth. Oh, there's your final answer. You did it without writing anything down, didn't you? Okay. All right. Alexandria, what'd you get? 21. 21. I got it. I got it. Whoa. 21 what? There you go. She got 21 fifths. Anybody agree with that? Yeah. Absolutely. Look at all those hands agreeing. Because 5 times 4 is 20, plus the 1 more is 21, we keep our denominator fifth. See? You got this. All right, let's do another one. Three and seven eighths. She done done it now. She brought out the eights and sevens. Ooh, this is easy. It could be nine and nine nines, so you know. No, we're ready. Actually, eight nines. Don't do that. Don't do that. It would. It would. Thank you. No. It would be easy now. All right, I want to see every hand up. Yeah, every hand. Just every hand. I messed it. I messed it. I'm not even kidding. Well, some of you may have it, but you're not quite sure. Not every hand. I get it. Anybody's gonna help us out here. Oh, oh, we need the money. All right, hold on, I gotta be over here. Come back here, come back here. Yes. Okay. We've got 31 eighths. Yes. So I'm coming back. I just kicked somebody's marker on the way up here. You know, I, mine just fell. Okay. I felt it. All right, let's, let's, eight times three was 24 plus the seven, 24, seven, 31 eighths. Who got that? Me. Stand up if you got that. Stand up if you got that. All right, say woohoo if you got that. Woohoo! Okay, because that, no, no, that ruins it for the rest of us, okay? All right, have a seat. Okay. Well, that's the end of... No, it isn't. All right, let's do two more. These are quick. Two more, and then we're going to take our break. All right, what about three and seven tenths? What did you get for a final answer? 37 tenths. Anybody else get 37 tenths? Okay. 10 times 3 is 30, plus 7 more, 37 tenths. Okay. Excellent. Wait, okay. Hold on. This might help us. What did you do? I messed up because instead of the 3, I put a 2. Okay. So you just copied it down wrong? Yeah. I can't tell you how many times that's gotten us. What do you want to share? Nine. Well, you know, I got to think about after I said that. Nine and nine ninths is actually what number? Nine ninths is another whole, so it's not really nine yeah. and nine ninths. It's actually ten. Yeah. So I will do one like that. Y'all want that right now? No. Yes. Let's do this. Do it the same way. Oh, so, so it's easy. 
Yeah. The other one. If all the others have been easy, it should be pretty easy too. Does not count when it's not. Okay. Can I just. I read one for. Hold on. That's not what it's about. I don't know how to write it on the Okay, guys, let's let it be quiet for people to work. Overnight. Okay. All right, when did you get? I got 89. Nine. This time's this. Shh. Okay. Guys, we do this for a reason. Okay. So that this is not distracting. So let's, let's, uh. All right. If you got that, show it. Or no. This is how you can show us too. Okay. All right, this is correct. Because nine times nine is eighty-one plus eight more is eighty-nine. Nice. Okay. All right. When we come back, I'm going to show you in our problem set which you know we're going to do a few problems from twenty-four, a few problems from twenty-five. If you are at home on lesson twenty-four. Find the page. Well, the page numbers are different. Here we go. If we are, if you are on lesson 24, we're going to do the ones in the box, the grid. Same for lesson 25. Okay. All right. So, go ahead and put up your whiteboards. Please put your mask on and line up.